DC Animated Series released part two of this Batman story, The Long Halloween on VOD. I really like part one of this story as I gave it a score of 80 and was really excited to see this one. The same actors return for part two, which include Jensen Ackles, Naya Riviera, uh, Josh Jamel, Billy Burke, Titus Welver, Dave DiMaccia, Troy Baker, Julian Nath- Nathanson, and Jack Quaid. These two movies were released about a month apart, making us wait for the conclusion of this story. I was excited to watch part two because I enjoyed part one so much, even though part one had a few things I did not care for. But this is on the review of part two here and the final conclusion of this story. Make sure you stick around to the end of this video, see my top five uh, ranked list of something of a genre related to this movie. The start of Long Halloween Part 2 had me hooked from the beginning. I really like seeing the way movies creatively show the opening credits. And for this movie, the opening credits were represented alongside snapshots of the Batman comic panels. I thought this was a simple yet excellent way to connect us back to the source material of this story. Uh, But in Part 2, we pick up where the first one left off. Uh, Batman is being held captive by Poison Ivy while the Holiday Killer is still at large. Uh, Batman has to fight off multiple villains in this movie while investigating who the holiday killer is and bringing justice to Gotham City. This movie is an enjoyment to watch, but still I thought part one was a little bit better. Part one had more of a mystery aspect of who the killer is, plus good action fight scenes. It felt part two was a much slower pace and did not have the great fight scene or chase car chase scene that I was expecting from part two. But I did like the Poison Ivy Catwoman fight. That was the best one of the movie. Uh, But the fight left me wanting more. It was really short. And there's no payoff later on in the movie of them fighting again. And Catwoman was the highlight of this movie. Just like the first one, I feel like she overshadowed Batman. She was the character I care about the most and the developed well while kicking ass along the way. Almost all the villains in this movie had short scenes and were not... uh, included in the movie for very long they kind of just got together as a group and try to uh defeat batman here but one character i did like seeing in part two was scarecrow the animation got really good for his scenes with with him spraying batman with his toxins it was scary and creepy hallucinations you gotta see on screen and the red hue of the scene of elevated the scene and made you feel more emotions of unrest and just uneasy and just terror uh, from my previous review of part one, you should know they did not like the way the lo- Joker looked or sounded. And this is the same for part two. It actually annoyed me a little bit more, even though he wasn't in it as long. But just going back to that same style of how he looked just really irked me. When I think of the Joker, the face and the body type of the animation, this movie does not match my own view of him. His voice is just off to me, too, as well. I don't know how you can fix that but it might just be because the Joker has been used so much over time with great performances that the Joker did not come off as iconic in this one as the other versions of him. The Joker's actions, looks, and mannerisms are just fine in this movie. Nothing great like I've seen before, just, just a fine performance, but it's a Joker you're always wanting a great performance out of, and this one just wasn't that memorable, wasn't that great in my opinion it was just fine another point i want to bring up is why do we have to see bruce's parents die every time in batman movies we all know the story it's like the death of uncle bun in the spider-man movies it has been done again and again spider-man homecoming was the first movie not to show uncle bun's death and it was refreshing it was great we already know we can get right into the story I think the same should be true for Batman. We do not need to see a no-name mobster killer uh, killing his parents every time a Batman movie comes out. It gets overplayed. It's not doesn't really lead anything to the story because we already know about it. You can just say it and then uh, we know what the impact is of this because everyone, I think, who sees a Batman movie knows his parents die and the killer breaks the charm necklace of his mom and all that and it affects him a lot and why he becomes batman i think everyone who sees a batman movie movie knows that but i really hope to enjoy batman long halloween part two 
more because part one was so enjoyable and I was ready for this conclusion. But DC should have just kept this to one complete movie rather than splitting it into two parts, I feel. But I give the movie a 73 out of 100. Go check it out now on VOD. Now onto my quick uh, top five ranking list. Uh, I've could have gone in many different ways uh, with this top five list for Batman. I try to get creative, not just list off my top five Batmans. I'll do that in the future at some point with the Batman live action movie. Instead, I'm just going to rank the top five movies with part two in the title. So here we go. At number five is Hot Shots Part Two, a funny spoof comedy that really delivers on laughs. Hollywood makes terrible spoof movies today. Uh, but the 90s had good gems in them and just good to see a classic uh, spoof movie back in the day. Uh, another one I would recommend is Loaded Weapon because I love that spoof movie. But Hollywood needs to stop making these terrible spoof comedies that are just poop jokes and just dumb, stupid humor. The ones back in the 90s were intelligent and still made fun of the movie they were making fun of. And then at number four here is Karate Kid Part 2, a good sequel that takes the characters to new locations to expand the first movie while also bringing in new characters to root for and root against. At number three is Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows Part 2. Now this took me a while to see this Harry Potter movie because I did not like the Part 1 of Deathly Hallows and would always turn, off, turn it off before going into Part 2. Uh, but when I finally watched the movie, it became one of my favorite Harry Potter movies of the franchise. and was a good ending to this Harry Potter story that took seven films to tell. And then at number two is A Quiet Place Part Two. I just reviewed this earlier this year. Go check out my review as to what I thought of the movie. Um, it was really good. I really enjoyed it. It's at number two here and it's only came out a couple months ago so you know how much of an impact it's made and then finally at number one is back to the future part two a great sequel that can be rewatched over and over again uh, i think i might like it even a little bit more than part one they're kind of equal for me in the back to the future uh franchise so go check it out if you haven't seen it. i'm sure most of you have though but thanks for watching everyone uh let me know your own top five lists uh, of the criteria I've just laid out or your thoughts on the Batman the Long Halloween Part 2 in the comments.